G'day guys, how are you going? There's always going to be a discussion, what's better, the diesel room heater or a gas room heater? Now they've got their pros and cons for, for each. The diesel heaters are quite inexpensive um, to use and also to buy in, in general, but I don't think they're going to last as long because you know the fins and that get gunked up by the diesel and also you, you also have to carry you know some, some diesel along with you to run it. It doesn't use stacks of it, but that's part of it. The other one you can buy is like the Truma gas heater, the Vario heat. Um, I mean, they're, they're great, but quite expensive. Um, but they don't use a stack loads of gas. On the maximum, when the maximum is cranking out, it's only like 10 megajoules an hour, right? And most of the time, it's just maintaining the temperature. Anyway, um, my customer today, he's got this van, and we have just put a Truma gas Vero heat in under the bed. Had a few little dramas to get it all right, but I'll just show you how we, how we stuck it in and who hooked it all up. And absolute success. All right, see you on the other side of the uh, logo. Okay guys, I'll take you inside and uh, I'll show you the, you know, the setup that we've got inside now. Now when, when, the, um, when he originally came out to, um, to chat to me about it, he said that um, he wants it installed under the bed, no worries, um, and, but he said that he had a mate of his that all he chucked it under the bed and, sunk, and put it out through that cupboard and out the out, outside wall there, you know? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no worries. And then um, I said, yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, then I went out to the gas bottles, the gas bottle, the hoses are really stiff. Your hoses are really stiff. They're on the way out, so it's good to get them changed over. So I said, "You want to change them over to the new, you know, the new um, black knob that they got now? You know, the, the new um, connector, I should say." Uh, he said, "Yeah, go to that new regulator as well. It's well over five years old, so you know, let's let's just get rid of it while I'm here. It's so much easier and takes so much less time if I can do it all in the one hit." And also, he said he was, you know, he kept taking the bottles out and sticking them. Uh, for his barbecue and, and having his barbecue out. So we uh, put a bayonet in for him as well, all at the same time. So that's what we decided. And off he went. And now I'll take you, he also said just in here, in that cupboard there, there's a gas pipe there, and that goes to the hot water unit. So the hot water unit's on the other side. So I'll take you outside now and just show you where that vent would have come out, okay? All right, so here's the hot water unit, okay, down here. So, so the vent would have ended up being somewhere here in the cupboard, okay? Now, um, the vent has to be, you know, 300 mil away from any air intake, and this is like considered an air intake, you know, for the exhaust and that, so we, we could try and get it in there, but it would have to be at the very front of that cupboard, and that means it, it sucks up a bit of room. Um, the other tr trouble is if you look underneath here, I don't know if you can see that, if you go underneath this, this cable here, that's a, that's a, a power cable, and just going straight up inside the cupboard there, they got two, two power points that were just there. Okay, so the, the pipe would, you know, to avoid this, um, you know, the distance there back here, um, I would have had a good chance of it being right on that wire. So I thought, no, that's not gonna sort of work. So I went around the other side of the van, um, did some measurements as well, and I could see that um, the vent here, yeah, could, could come out here, which is fine, because um, there's no combustible materials also. And here is the annex wall, you know, that you want to put it in. So obviously I couldn't have it in here. You can't have it blowing into your annex because they could seal it off, you know, properly, you know, nice and tight. And then you've got this gas going in there. If someone's, you know, wanted some of the grandkids sleeping out here, they could pass out and never wake up. So this was all fine. This was probably the only option they had because one thing with these trimmers, you can't go through the floor and out here. That would be great because then we could just have it out the bottom, but you're not allowed to do that. So this is where we decide to install it. And I'll show you how it goes through the cupboard now. Okay, so just inside the cupboard here, I'll show you how it's gone through. Let's move this paper out. Um, so that's the ducting that's come through. So it's actually got two, two tubes. It's got the outer tube, which the air gets sucked in to, um, to make the combustion. And then there's a smaller inner tube that goes out, which is the hot air that blows out. So as the cool air is coming in, it's sort of cooling out, uh, you know, it's making the, the, the inner tube, which has got the hot air, cool as well. So it's pretty safe. It's not, not really hot to touch or anything um one thing when you're drilling through cupboards and stuff mate see it just looks like that wall and this wall and this wall are all the same level but they aren't because this wall here and this wall here are the same but then the cupboard kicks back about 30 mils you can see down there that's that's how far the gap is right and on on this side it's it's hard up against it so measure hundred times guys before you drill a hole because if I were to punch it to the back of the cupboard what it looks like I would have chowed into this part here and I don't know what so there could be some some wires behind there or something like that so anyway we, we got that through and then 
this is where we uh, stuck the Truma heater. So we put it on the angle like that. So this could feed in nicely. So there's no tight bends or anything. And also this, um, the, the hot air duct that blows out would, would go out on a nice angle and pull it up. So you, you can still got stacks of room around here to put, put stuff under the bed, you know. Um, here's a vent that comes out the front. This is all adjustable so you can blow it down around which, whichever way sort of thing. Here's a gas um, that goes through the floor. There's a, there's a massive, uh, there's a chassis beam right here. So we just, you know, had to measure a couple times, missed that. Uh, you've got your isolation valve to, to shut it off when you, when you don't use it, very important. And these have their own regulator because it's very, um, yeah, it's got to be very precise. It's got to be set to 1.8, between 1.8 and 2.2 um, kPa. So pretty, pretty, uh, you know, pretty precise. Um, and my mate next door, Glenn, he, he's done all the wiring for it. His, um, and this is the other vent that we can use to um, sort of go through. So what's meant to happen when the bed's down, it'll, it'll pull air from here and the air goes into here, heats up and, and passes out through the cupboard. So, yeah, turned up, turned out really good. Uh, still got plenty of room and he's super happy with it. And uh, Glenn sort of run the wire through there, through there, and he stuck it up, up there. And then you can see when the bed's, when the bed's shut, this is where the, um, where the heat is where the heater control is, right in the bed, so you can just, you know, if you're feeling cold at night, just turn it on, which is great. And then his little, that little, um, that little thing there on the other side, you see that black little, that's the, that's the temperature sensor, he's put that, so it'll suck it off the floor level. So when the floor gets to, you know, 24 or whatever it is, it'll shut down or turn it back on again. So that's, that's where he's put it. So that's how it all, all worked out. Pretty happy, I'll just show you the, um, the gas bayonet now. This is the gas bayonet we, we tucked up underneath there. Okay, so that, that runs through and then it's all welded up underneath there, all the T's all, all clipped nicely and stuff. We've, all, all, all my T's are welded, you know. I can weld, it's future proof and then that's, that's all sorted. That's all great. And then it's got the little, yeah, very important dust plug that I've still got to put in. And then here's a new, brand new regular that we put. New hoses with the new connectors. These are really easy to put on actually. So super easy. So yeah, that's... Uh, how it all sorted out, so very good. So if you're feeling a little bit cold on those winter nights and you wanna put a uh, gas heater in, just call your local plumber, get them to have a crack at it. Or if you live in Perth, yeah, sure, give us a call, we'd be happy to help. Also, mate, if you, if you guys wanna do all the ducting and stuff yourself, make, yeah, you know, make sure you gotta keep it to code and everything because we won't be able to connect it unless it is. And uh, we can just do the gas side of things, which is, which is easy too, you know, so um, happy to help out anyways. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you later.